actually. And so with me, um, Kansas is just not a word that ever enters my mind. And the thing that I've discovered working with the handicapped who've had their sense of self-esteem beaten for a long time, that when you nurture that, that's what all of us really need. We all want to be treated special. We all want to be nurtured. And that's one thing I think Philip's parents are doing really, really well with him. He has a, a good sense of self-esteem, that little kid. Originally, we didn't really know what cerebral palsy was, and it was initially was a shock. And uh, we we just didn't know what he would do. And uh, I would have to say, I probably never thought he would be skating. I mean, because we weren't even sure. Just uh, well, even the doctors weren't sure. It's just the individual effort that went into it, how much he would persevere and what he wanted to do. All they told us is uh, never tell him that he can't do it. I don't think there is any other program around, you know, like Saba that um, takes these kids and shows them, you know, as well as Saba does, that you can do it, you know, and they can do it. I mean, I didn't believe it myself, you know, but Elizabeth is, you know, as you can see, is very energetic and has, you know, a really wonderful personality, and she just, she will not take no from for an answer from the kids or from anybody else. The first experience, we were skating at the Odd, and um, most of the other people that were skating were a lot older than Philip, and we went in the room with them, and some of the children were saying, you know, what's wrong with the boy, and, uh, and he got real upset, because mentally there's, you know, he doesn't have any problems, so he was really, he just wanted to go home. I said to my husband, you know, I said, we really blew it this time. I said, we shouldn't have never brought him. He's not going to be able to skate. And we made a mistake, you know. And Tony said, oh, he was, he was real confident. You, you find when you have a handicapped child that when your confidence breaks down, the other one seems to take over, you know. And he just said, he'll, he'll do all right. And I didn't go. The next three times I said, I'm not going. So you, you took him. Yeah, well, I took him, and then within three weeks, he was skating. So after the third week, they came home, and Tony said, he's really ice skating. You have to come with us. And I said, yeah, mm-hmm. So the next Monday, they took me with, and I really, I couldn't <laughs> believe it, because he really was ice skating, you know I mean? And he, he just, it has given him so much confidence. Heel cord lengthening, so your Achilles tendon 
Um, like I said, because the muscles work overtime, they tend to shorten, bringing the foot down in a, if this were my ankle, more of a position like this. Okay, and already Philip has had to have surgery done back here to, to uh, lengthen this muscle to make his foot rest. Okay, make his foot rest flat, flatter on the skin. And we usually do this for a hundred seconds on each foot. Okay. Hold on. Why don't you switch? Why don't you switch? Okay. We don't know ourselves how they feel, you know, and to sit down and say to them, you know, how do you feel, at this age, it's hard to do that, and it's nice to hear, you know, it's nice that I can be in the background, or we can be in the background and hear how he, you know, relates, you know, how he thinks about himself, you know, and explaining it to other children in his own age. Of course, the kids all thought he was really lucky because he got to get out of school for two hours and go ice skating, you know, while they had to be in school. All the kids in his class were just saying, Philip, you're so lucky, you're so lucky, you get to do everything, you know, and they really fostered his feelings of accomplishment, you know, through the, from the skating. There's the product of self-esteem nurturing. And he's going to do a lot of neat stuff in his life, that little boy. I have a really good feeling about him and how he's going to grow with his world. I started skating when I was quite young, somewhere between four and five. I was. I was competitive skating between six and seven years old, so it's almost as far back as my as my memory goes. Skating was a part of it. So when I was 17, I joined the ice capades. After the the second year, I felt I couldn't really learn anything more there. Sort of uh, IDTA. I did that already. The, that for me was the point where I felt like I would be sliding. I wouldn't be growing anymore. I wouldn't be getting anything. I'd garnered everything I could out of that experience, and it was time to take that knowledge with me and move on, you know, to the next level, whatever that might be. When I came back to Buffalo after life in the ice capades, I started teaching skating at several different rinks in the area, and it took quite a few years to build up enough clientele where I could do that permanently. I I started the figure skating programs at about five of the local rinks and just built up the programs from nothing. I got bored, I think, rather quickly with that. And I was puzzled because I thought, well, I was eight years old and I wanted to teach skating and I always knew that I wanted to do that. And then there I was at 21 and 22 doing it and finally doing as much of it as I wanted to do and I got bored. So in the fall of 1976, I started thinking about that. I said, well, I like teaching and I tried to analyze it. Say, these are the elements that I'm doing that I really like. These are the ones I'm not so crazy about. These are the needs in me that aren't being met. How can I make a proper mix of these things? And that's really what was the beginning of the germination of the seed and the idea which became Saba. Elizabeth and I uh, met through some mutual friends, and we got into conversation about, you know, as, as everyone uh, does, where do you work, what do you do? I just happened to be a grant writer for the United Way of Buffalo and Erie County. She needed someone to write grants for her organization, which was very young at the time. Uh, I must say that we met in 1977, and since that time, uh, over the last uh, eight years or so, we've... Uh, had about eight ice, ice shows. We've written grants to generate uh, funds to keep to buy ice time so that the kids can skate. And um, one day we're we're going to have Sava across the country. That's what I'm looking forward to. In every state, and I think a program of this type will be beneficial to many, many kids in the future. It's it's something that uh, will help them grow and it'll help America grow and because it spreads so much enrichment enrichment to everyone that it touches. And it's 
I have goosebumps now just talking about it. That's okay. that's how you feel when you work for, for Saba. I think that um, finding a person's special talents and motivating them in a direction that's going to make them feel good is really the key to working with a lot of good people and, and getting a lot of volunteers. And I hold a minimum of a half an hour interview with everybody who volunteers, myself personally, for the program, whether they're going to tie skates on the kids or do the exercises or, or be on the ice or, <clears throat> or be a prop person or a board member. Um, many of the people you talk to here are on my board of directors. They all work for free and uh, by law, you know, they have to be non-paid members to be a board member of a not-for-profit educational corporation, which is what SABA is. They give me, I, ca I can't even count the hours of time and energy and expertise. And um, <clears throat> if, if you, when I, when I meet with somebody, I really try to find out what their needs are. You know, what in their life is missing that they want to fulfill through SABA? You spend time with us because you feel it's important, because you understand the importance of a, of a little kid feeling a little kid who's who's crippled, feeling the wind in their face, and and really realizing what kind of importance comes from you and I running, and and what that feels like, and and realizing what how important it is for somebody who's never felt that before in their life, and how important that is for a little a little seven year old or or a seventy two year old. <laughs> with Sal and through my kids is fitness and you can't you can't teach that unless you are it you know yourself so and I believe that you might as well get your exercise doing things you like I like to dance so I can really work hard and um, push my heart and and all my muscle groups to uh, to strong endurances and uh, enjoy it you know it's not um, boring to me like running is or some other sports I think I probably try through my skating with the handicap to do my part as a teacher and a healer and a nurturer and and those are things that are just part of me and so Sava is really a reflection of my own personal philosophy as much as growing things out in the yard is because I, I like to see things grow, I like to see them flourish, I like to see them bloom whether it's as mundane as a flower or as ethereal as, as a human being and a smile on their face opening up something to them. It's part of the same uh, philosophy inside of me. The first day I met Mark, he came to the South Towns rink for the odd and he was, um, he was very polite and well-mannered but uh, shy, I guess is the word I'm, I'm thinking of, and, and sort of uh, within himself. And as I got to be around Mark more and more, it was very easy to teach him to skate. He was a good athlete before he was blinded. Through Saba, it was a very good learning experience not only for myself about skating, but about other handicapped people, and not only physical, but mental disordered people. It's showing me that there are a lot of things that can be done. Whereas sometimes you think, no, you can't do that without sight. Well, you, you don't know until you try. A little more than two years ago, I was involved in a very bad car accident. And uh, it was a very scary situation when I came to and realized that I couldn't see and everything, but um, my family and friends were there to help me through, especially my mother. She's helped me out quite a bit this whole way, and she's really built me and got me up and told me it's time to do this and it's time to do that. Let's give it a try. And she's built my stamina up and encouragement and made me feel like a real man. I think I, well, I basically taught him how to move with his cane. Uh, teaching him how to eat was no problem. Uh, it was there. He was just very stubborn about it. And I don't really blame him in that situation. Uh, banged heads with him a lot, you know. He had a problem when he was in the hospital with walking and moving around. He didn't want to get up. He didn't want to go because he didn't know where he was. This is in the very beginning when he finally came around and taking like his first steps, he was determined not to, and I was determined he was going to. So it was like a headlock all the time. And eating, uh, you know, where is it? It's here.
here. Get it. Get it yourself. You know, there are a lot of tears that he couldn't see that were there. He could probably feel them. I didn't want to see him go down for the count. And I was determined he wasn't going to. He's gone further in this year than he has in the past. He's taken on a lot. I could say I'm at one of the happiest points in my life now because since my accident occurred, I learned a lot about myself. I, I had to grow up fast because everything was hitting me at once. I had to deal with something that not the average person has to deal with. Therefore, the reason that made me happy is because I know myself now better than I ever knew myself in my whole life.